This is Robert Forsch with The Truth. I'm encouraging everybody to, to question everything, to explore what you believe, to research, research what you believe reality is. How does this all work out? Well, it's a real challenge because we have a, a tremendous amount of information and along with that, a tremendous amount of deception. This here is the Cherry Grove Point, the point in Cherry Grove as many know it. The coastal preserve here fills up from the open ocean. North Myrtle Beach, South Carolina is uh, in the United States is where we are. On my channel, including and especially my liked videos playlist, there is a tremendous amount of content there. And there is contradictory information there about that. And I'm not trying to give you a mixed message at all. What I'm wanting to do is help you to understand the reality that it's a real challenge to find the truth in a sea of deception. So the sun's approaching, the tide's going out, low tide will be 1230 Eastern Standard Time. And that is the open ocean right in the middle of the view there. Some of the videos I've shared recently are of the wildfires in Australia, as well as beautiful aerial platform recording of uh, just the beauty and majesty of creation in Australia. It's a beautiful location. And so part of what I'll unfold too is the obvious contradiction in public policy and political activity, governmental activity there as well as here. I posted some video about the um, missiles being launched in, in and around Iran. What's interesting about this is that the, the system of control presents information to cause an effect with the population. Therein lies the challenge. It's, a, it's largely a manipulation of humanity, manipulating our perspective. The prison that most people are in is in their mind. It's what they believe to be true. So one of the realities that I'm showing right now is that little bright spot of sunlight approaching on the stationary and level Earth. Keep in mind the surface of undisturbed water is flat and level and there would be no level anywhere if the Earth was spinning, wobbling, gyrating, rotating towards the sunrise at 1,038 miles an hour at the equator. No, that's not happening. So that heliocentric or global lie is just that. It's a lie. And I'm exposing that. I want you to know that. I wanted to keep the island in the view, if I can, and get the sunrise. So I'm going to just head on over this way a little bit. So I've got a live YouTube broadcast as well as a um, P1000 recording. It's about 34 degrees out right now. And for a good part of the evening there was no wind. 
now we've got an offshore coming from behind me at a couple miles an hour. So is what you believe true? How about a variation of this? Is everything you believe true? Is everything I believe actually true? There was a Star Trek episode where V'ger was uh, actually an artificial intelligence robot. Yeah. And he was really re wreaking havoc on the Enterprise. And what Spock, Spock asked him a, or made a statement to him that caused him to fry. Uh, Spock was the example of perfect logic and lack of emotion. He said, everything I say is a lie. And the robot just fried. Didn't know what to do with that. So part of the interesting dynamic is that we're presented a lot of the reality of the world we live in on the in the movies and then we're presented a lot of fakery in what's being presented as history what's being presented as current events current news to manipulate humanity and I'm exposing that so Walter Cronkite for his years of activity presenting information would close out his presentation by giving the date and that's the way it is. Or is it? You know, he presented the moon landing hoax as reality. He presented the uh, the Vietnam War as necessary and President Nixon, John F. Kennedy, all the different events that Walter Cronkite presented were presented as fact, of course. Why, why would I watch the news to be intentionally lied to? Well, the problem is a lot of people believe they're getting the truth there. And although there's some factual, truthful information being presented on the news, there's a lot of deception that is also being presented there. I, I believe it's actually beyond a level of critical thinking, human capacity to get what I'm talking about, because I, I mean to come away with ultimately what I believe the truth about all this is. So to be very clear, I believe there's a spiritual battle going on between God and Satan and the two families that are representative. The God that I'm talking about is the author of the Bible, the living word, the living water, the great I am, the Alpha and Omega, knowing the end from the beginning. May know him as Jesus Christ, Yeshua, Yahweh. He's the word that took up flesh and dwelt among us paid a price that we couldn't pay for salvation. All of God's children will absolutely be born of His Spirit. The responsibility that I have is to obediently walk with God and rely on Him to empower me to do what I do. In the context of that, it's really unpopular with a lot of people. The majority of humanity, as best I can tell, is deceived. And by irony and paradox, they don't know it. They don't know they're deceived. And pride is a powerful catalyst for deception. So when information is being presented as scientific fact, the intellectuals will parade their ability to remember and regurgitate the false information. Quotes like, if you understand quantum physics, you clearly don't understand quantum ph physics. It's almost like the Spock line that says everything that I say is a lie. 
It's just very, very interesting. So scientific fact as it's presented is largely science fiction. And if I go on a page or a video and comment to that effect where they're showing how gravity works and how amazing it is that the all the planetary movements and all of that, well, if I say that's science fiction, a lot of them are just going to come on over and start hating on me, on my, on my channel. I know for sure that we don't live on a globe. That's not even possible. The upside-down world exists in the imagination only. Meaning that down there in Australia right now, those wildfires are going on roughly upside down or at an extreme angle only in the imagination. The earth is stationary and level. The earth doesn't move. That's the biblical proclamation and the observable reality. So the people that are all about creating technology and believing they're helping humanity are largely in part, they're part of a, a grand illusion, a grand deception. So for example, I featured SpaceX and the projected launching of um, satellites for internet for everybody. Well, we do have a firmament up above the stationary and level earth. That's the biblical proclamation. And I believe they're bouncing frequencies off of that. Cell towers. We've got Wi-Fi coming through um, coming through and, and uh, coming through LED lights and that. I can hear the uh, boat coming. I want to kind of zoom in on that show you the light skipping, bouncing off of the windows there and reflecting on that water. He's going on out to do some crab trap uh, placement and collection. There's a lot of shrimp boats out there today. Artificial intelligence is extremely sophisticated, powerful, and presenting a false reality to the collective consciousness of humanity. Extremely sophisticated. Here's the uh, waves coming in from the boat. Maybe you can hear them. And then that'll stop. All the reflections like that, I'm intentionally here to show the washboard surface, the sunrise, the reflection of the birds in the water. Spectacular out here. The sun moves across the water much like a laser beam, showing the reality of the world we live in here at this location. Now I do have the P1000 recording a uh, more zoomed in version of some of this.
The title activity gives the NR optical limitations based on perspective and vantage point is one of the reasons why it appears that ships are going over a curve. Well, if the Earth were a sphere, there would be a curve away from us and then to each side, left and right, and there is not. That's conclusive evidence that we don't live on a globe. The other one is all of our interaction with water, including using the bathroom to bathe, shower, relieve ourselves or the great outdoors. That all indicates the impossibility of the globe. And the reason why I mention that continually is because one of the evidences that NASA is lying and SpaceX and Blue Origin and, and all that uh, space fantasy is they're lying. It doesn't mean they lie about everything. I really do like the, the solar city from Tesla and the, uh, the cyber truck and the roadster. I can remember the numbers, the stats, the world's fastest production car ever, period. Yeah, pretty cool. I would like one, however I can't afford it, and I don't believe Elon would want to give me one. I'm basically calling him a liar, presenting a false reality to humanity. And yet he talks about the artificial intelligence and cautions humanity and talks about, um, you know, one thing is for sure, we will not control it. <laughs> How about that? How about that? Well. One of the things that I have to say about all that is, now that I'm actually born again, the creator of this whole world lives inside of me and everybody else who's actually born again now. So greater is he that's in me than Satan and the fallen angels, demons, that type of thing. So that's why I'm not afraid. Now, not all of God's children are born again yet. I'm... I believe in the doctrine of election, the reality that God is all-powerful and all-knowing. And nothing happens in this world that he doesn't either cause or allow. That would be a problem for many people. And I was an atheist, okay? So for those that are atheists and believe I'm a simpleton for believing the Bible is true, <laughs> I would say, okay, well, do you believe you live on a spinning water ball hurling through space? That's not even possible. How about that? You know, you can't hang a wind chime upside down. You can't get water to stick to a spinning ball, a tennis ball, a beach ball, or a globe supposedly about 25,000 miles in circumference. I was. I've got some video on my channel where they're talking about what's at the core of Saturn. Are you serious? Or what's in the core of the world, the Earth? Like they can know how? How could they know? Apparently, the deepest borehole that we've been told exists is eight miles deep. That's the official story. They may have bored deeper. I don't know. I knew about tunnel boring machines in the early 70s. My dad sold steel to Manitowoc Engineering in Wisconsin. And he said, Bobby, I went down an elevator today. He looked like Get Smart. <laughs> he was a commercial steel salesman. He sold exotic metals to the military industrial complex and the paper industry and uh, race car aftermarket manufacturing companies and shipbuilding, Sturgeon Bay shipbuilding and that. What he told me, he said, I went down in an elevator today and I saw a tunnel boring machine that was so big they put it on the front end of a locomotive. And then they ship them all around the world out of Sturgeon Bay. Pretty amazing. And then I found out later in life about the deep underground military bases, the military industrial complex, the drugging of humanity, putting chemicals in the water that stupefy. Fluoride will do that. 
read the back of the toothpaste tube. I wouldn't put that in my mouth. I use baking soda and boron water. I boil it and have it in some water jugs around. It also mitigates some of the self-replicating nanobots, the particles, the particulate that they're putting in the atmosphere. There's a modification of the gene pool. Putting chemicals in the food, water, and air. How about that? I'm telling on them. So there's weather wars. Looks like my friend Robert over there, he he worked for the State Department. Let me zoom in on him. Yep, there he is. Let's see if he looks at me. Yeah, he and his wife work for the State Department. How about that? Yeah. Got an English accent. Here, now he, he dropped the... He dropped him. I can zoom in on him. He's taking notes. How about that? So, yeah, I'm not afraid to live, die, or tell the truth. How about that? Isn't that special? I did meet a Google executive out here. It's not like uh, a... <laughs> it's just kind of interesting. I've got a photographic memory. I don't remember it all. I just remember what I need to and retrieve it when I want to. When I need to. Also struck by lightning out here. Go figure. Struck by lightning is the name of the video. You can hashtag it if you want. I use a lot of hashtags and I put my name in almost everything, okay? And the reason why I do that, as well as my phone number, is it's searchable. And I want the people searching for the truth to be able to find it on my channel and on my social media activity, the platforms that I'm on. Because of what I do, about 40 million times people saw me and heard me. And because of that, I want them to be able to find my content. It's not a me show, it's a we show. A lot of, right, right now I've got almost 5,000 videos on my liked videos playlist. I did a premiere about a month ago, and it, when I did the premiere, it was just a regular video. And uh, my liked videos playlist went to private. That deactivated tens of millions of occurrences of my playlists all around the world. Isn't that interesting? Last year on August 1st, Facebook stopped me from putting my photo album link in comments. There's over 2,800 photos there and tens of millions of occurrences of my liked videos playlist in that. I had a friend tell me that YouTube took his um, took all his playlists and his watch list and wiped them out. So he was extremely grateful that uh, waving over at Robert there. <laughs> I was extremely or he was extremely grateful I sent him my playlist because it had a lot of the videos that he liked. In fact, he's been following me for quite some time, and he couldn't find my channel. So, just to be intellectually honest, when you type a word search in, and you get millions of results in less than a half a second, how many of those millions of results do you actually go through? Do you actually look at? So they don't have to actually take a channel down to hide that information from people. Now, because of the tide going out, I can show you a sailboat that was scuttled a couple years ago here. There it is. We've got real science, which is buoyancy. And yes, buoyancy works in, in the atmosphere as well. 
hydrogen dirigibles like the Hindenburg float until they meet up with the grounding and the electrical properties that caused it to explode. So hydrogen, oxygen and hydrogen, hydrogen H2O is what we're looking at in front of us and there's other elements in the water. However, when you apply enough electricity to water, it'll shatter the bond and you've got hydroxygen, a combustible mixture. I'm going to show you some flat and level water right here in the view. Those uh, trees right there reflecting back. And, the, um, and then this one right here, the island there. If you're watching on the live broadcast, come on back later if you like. A couple hours from now I'll have this video up there. Do you know how much a gallon of water weighs? That depends on temperature. Temperature changes volume and density of water. That variant drives the water cycle of the world. Australia is being affected by a serious drought by the withholding of water through private dams and the selling of water. It's illegal, it's criminal what's going on there. And you can explore my content on the channel to see that. Millions of animals being burned to death. Uh, I don't know how many Aborigines there were in Australia. I'm sure there's fewer now. How could they run away from that? It's criminal. Because of the weather wars, the, there's weather modification going on. Droughts and floods, tornadoes hurricanes, electronic weapons. The firmament is, uh, we've got evidence of that in Genesis, in the Bible. God opened up the floodgates of heaven, the fountains of the deep, and caused it to start raining. They're bouncing frequencies off of the signals, off of the dome, to give uh, supposed satellite communications, just so you know. I've got documentation on my channel to prove that. So you might want to take a look at my liked video playlists and see what videos you like there. You may have already liked those videos. So I wanted to uh, let you know that and also to let you know that you can contact me anytime. If you hashtag my name, you'll help keep the search result of the Robert Forsh hashtag, the number one search result in the world for that search. I believe God's grace is required to love and believe the truth, let alone find it. I encourage everybody to seek the truth with all your heart. Feel free to reach out anytime. You can messenger me through Facebook, if you go there, all my stuff is public. You can see that. Thank you so much for your public and private encouragement. This is Robert Forsh with The Truth.